So Neera Tandon was picked for OMB director. It's a very important uh, position as it pertains to the budget. And she was questioned about the issue of money in politics. Um, now, as I'm talking to you now, Bernie Sanders just did his questioning of Neera Tandon, and he had similar questions. But this is from the other day, and this was actually Republican Senator Josh Hawley prodding on the same issue. Take a look. Uh, Ms. Hannon, thank you for being here. Congratulations on your nomination. Let me start with a question about corporate special interests, if I could. Mm -hmm. This question relates to your broad view, I think, of, uh, of the economy and society. But let me just ask you, do you think that Wall Street and big tech companies have too much influence in our economy and society today? Yes. <laughs> I also, I'm glad to hear you say that. I, I agree with you. And I've talked for years now about these concentrations of power, how they stifle competition, hurt small business, and ultimately hurt working people. I want to ask you about uh, a report uh, from the New York Times and other outlets suggesting that you solicited tens of millions of dollars in donations from Wall Street and Silicon Valley companies as president of the Center for American Progress, including very large contributions from Mark Zuckerberg. I understand that in early 2019, Senator Sanders actually wrote to your organization suggesting that these corporate interests may be inappropriately influencing your work. Can you just give us a sense of how you will, if you're confirmed as OMB director, how you will advocate for working people, given this history of soliciting tens of millions of dollars from the biggest and most powerful corporations on the planet? Senator, the role of OMB is to serve the public, and I am 100% committed to that role. And let me say that, uh, just to be clear, uh, I believe that the Center for American Progress took funding from the Chan Zuckerberg Foundation, not Mark Zuckerberg directly, but I completely take the point about uh, uh, concerns about funding. And I can commit to you that uh, I will always uphold the highest ethical standards. I will work with career folks at OMB to make sure I do so. But I will also say that uh, no policy or position I have taken has been determined by the financial interests of any single person. $665,000, I think, from the personal foundation of Mr. Zuckerberg. Mm -hmm. Uh, millions of dollars from Wall Street financiers, big banks, foreign governments, Silicon Valley, a million dollars from the managing partner at Bain Capital, two and a half million dollars from the UAE. That was between 2016 and 2018. Given this record, uh, how can you assure us that you'll work to see that these Silicon Valley and Wall Street firms don't exercise undue influence frankly, influence that they've already got in the making of government policy and the control of our economy. I mean, what? how can you assure us that you're going to be an independent actor when you've been so close to them to have raised so much money over all these years? I, I really appreciate that question. And I would say um, I and the Center for American Progress aggressively to, take on the positions, take on the um, role of Facebook and tech companies, uh, have called for higher taxes and companies, regulations of Wall Street, uh, uh, financial transaction tax. I'm proud of the record of the Center for American Progress and policies that will limit the power of Wall Street, limit the power of tech companies. I would welcome the opportunity to talk with you and work with you on those ideas because I do agree with you that, uh, that, uh, corporate special interests have too much power in our discourse. And so whether it's a financial transaction tax or other proposals, obviously I, take on my role as OMB director would be one in which I follow the uh, follow the tax policy of the president. But it is my orientation that we, sh we need to rebalance power in our economy. And I hope there are ways you and I can work together in those arenas. Good. I'll hold you to that. Thank you. So this is the way she's approaching this is hilarious because anybody who knows anything about Neera Tandon knows she is knows she is extremely online all the time. And she, she quite literally tweets more than Trump. I mean, Trump's obviously gone now, but when Trump was on, she tweeted more than Trump. She was extra online, and she was always getting in Twitter fights nonstop. And, um, you know, she very famously was Bernie's harshest and, like, least fair critic. Big on spreading the Bernie bro myth, and they're all misogynists and racists, and it, it it's bad. It's bad. But, like... Now that she's sniffing power, 
She's right there to get real power. What do you see? She totally starts doing the tap dance in the Kabuki theater as she's getting grilled with legitimate questions, by the way. She's like, I really appreciate that question. She goes on to talk endlessly. I, I love bipartisanship. I'd love to work with people who disagree and reach across the aisle. And I'm a very open-minded and open-hearted person. Yes. So she's, she's saying the things that she thinks she has to say in order to get the job. That's what we're watching right now. We're watching like a gross job interview where, but we have like her long record of the things she really says and we know the things she really believes. Now, by the way, before I continue, let me just say, Holly's a fraud. Holly's a fraud. This was a great line of questioning, but he's a fraud. So he pretends like he's a populist. He's not really a populist. The most credit you can give him is pushing for those $2,000 checks and working with Bernie Sanders on that. I'd like to see a lot more of that kind of stuff, but don't get it twisted. The dude's for right-to-work laws, which it's anti-union le legislation, um, so not pro-worker in that sense. This is a guy who was for a number of outsourcing deals. So, so much for, you know, Mr. Populist. So there's a number of policy positions where he's sort of a standard Republican, but he, he postures as a more populist Republican. So this was a great line of questioning, but point is, just know who Josh Hawley really is. But anyway, back to Neera Tandon. Listen, in 2019 alone, Neera Tandon and the Center for American Progress, they accepted anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000 from Amazon, Facebook, Google, J.P. Morgan, Microsoft, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. And, oh, I'm sorry, and some of them gave fifty to 100000 But that's who's giving to the Center for American Progress. So the real purpose of the Center for American Progress, just so you know, especially further back you go, the idea was... It's Hillary Clinton's shadow government. And if slash when, they thought when, Hillary gets elected, we need to make sure we've already bought influence. So that's why you see all these major corporations and all these wealthy donors, foreign governments too, they've given a tremendous amount of money to the Center for American Progress over the years. And the idea was... When Hillary's elected, she's just going to go over to the Center for American Progress and just say, you know, you're all in my government now. And so they were already ahead of the game and already had bought the people that they needed to buy so that when Hillary's in there, they'll be able to get whatever they want. I mean, that was the whole idea of the Center for American Progress, you know, um, and... She says, I've never done anything that, you know, that revolves around the money, never done something for donors. Nonsense. With Neera Tannen, we actually have a number of direct cases of exactly this happening. So, Center for American Progress took millions from Bloomberg, and then they stripped out a criticism of Bloomberg from a report on anti-Muslim bias. And of course, Bloomberg was doing the surveillance of Muslims in New York City. There was this big portion that was a giant criticism of Bloomberg, they took it out because Bloomberg gives them millions. I mean, that one's like the open and shut case. There's another one when it comes to Israel. They take plenty of money from pro-Israel donors, and then they silenced criticism of Israel at Think Progress. You know, Zed Jelani has incredible stories about similar things to this. She wanted an interview with Netanyahu, and they tamped down on criticism of Netanyahu. They've taken plenty of money from, like, the UAE and Saudi Arabia, and they're, you know, the... the what would have happened had Hillary gotten elected is exactly what you think. It's a giant, you know, festival of corruption, and they do the bidding of whoever their donors are. So, that's the reality, man. On top of just her terrible policy positions. She was in favor of cutting Social Security and Medicare. Uh, very openly on that side. There's the famous story about Libya. Where in an email she casually said. We should bomb Libya. Steal their oil and use it to pay down the US deficit. So you get stupid deficit hawkery and imperialism all in one. Um, I believe she was with the emails with Hillary Clinton. Where they're like oh. The war in Iraq is like a business opportunity. They were talking about it as such. It, I mean, this is as bad as it gets, man. It's as bad as it gets. And it's really gross that Bernie Sanders would be the head of the committee that would effectively approve her. They should not 
at all ever by any stretch of the imagination approve near a tandon and if they do that says quite a bit